Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Are you wondering what kind of food should you add to your prepper pantry right now? What kind of food should you buy this month? And how are you going to use some of those foods? If you've been into prepping and stockpiling food storage for any amount of time, you likely have a lot of basic foods. And remember that not all foods will last forever, so you should be stocking up on foods that you use then you should be rotating them and replacing them. And if you see something new that you think you'd like to try, go ahead and get one and take it home and try it. And if you like it, that's when you stock up on it. Don't stock up on a food that you haven't tried unless you know for sure how you're gonna use it and if you're going to enjoy it because we don't wanna waste our precious dollars on foods that it turns out nobody cares to eat. Well, I was looking over my food storage stockpile and trying to add in a little variety also to look where are there any gaps because I do try to rotate my food and use some of those foods. And sometimes we find that we're using a bunch of something we didn't even realize that that particular item was getting low. Or we just want to add variety because maybe some of the foods that we have are a little bit on the boring side. So here are my suggestions on foods you might want to stockpile this month to add to your prepper pantry and your food storage stockpile. The first category that I chose to add into my food storage stockpile was canned goods. I started off picking up a few cans of broth and gravy. These are great starters if you want to make soups and stews or pour over leftovers and make it be a little juicier, more flavorful add a little contrast and difference to the meals that you already have on hand and some of the things that you have left over. The next category that I chose is canned tomatoes and tomato products. I have some diced tomatoes and some Rotel and those are spicy tomatoes with green chilies in them. I have a lot of canned beans on hand but I thought it was a good idea to add some variety into the cans of beans. So it's not just pinto beans, black beans, white beans, whatever. I also have a three bean blend which has a variety of beans in them. The three bean salad has a variety of beans with a nice flavorful sauce. So you could even chill it and then you have a nice three bean salad you could serve over a bed of lettuce or you could warm it up. It's still going to be something different and delightful. These are also ways to add variety into the dishes that you normally make with beans. You can add a variety to change up that flavor, make your meal more interesting, and you never know when you might discover something that becomes your new favorite. Next, I added some powdered milk. I like the Nido Fortificata powdered milk. You can find it on the Hispanic aisle. It's a whole milk. It's very flavorful. I enjoy using it. It tastes like real milk and I'm not a fan of non-fat dry milk. The benefit of the non-fat dry milk is it can last for up to 30 years. The Nido Fortificata needs to be rotated. It can last for a few years but it's not going to last as long as non-fat dry milk. I made a video before of how I portion out the Nido Fortificata once I open it to help it be a little more useful and easier to use, portion control, and also have it last a little bit longer. I'll put a link to that video of what I do with it in case you're interested in how I portion it out so that I have the serving sizes I need, how I keep some in my pantry. Sealing it into a clean canning jar with a tight fitting lid is going to help it last longer. If you're looking for a tasty powdered milk, this is a great one to try. I also stocked up on some of the shelf stable milk. It's UHT or ultra high temperature pasteurized so that it can last in the pantry in the cardboard type container for a long time. I've kept these in the refrigerator unopened and they've been good far past the date on the box. I'm never afraid to go ahead and inspect something if it's out of date. I never throw it away simply because it is out of date and you shouldn't either. You can look over the container, see if it still looks fresh, good, safe, nothing is leaking, bulging. Open it up, does it smell okay? Pour it out. Is it lumpy? Does it have the right consistency? And you can figure out if your milk has lasted or not. I've not had any of the UHT milk go bad, and so I'm a huge fan of it. I don't use milk all the time, but when I use it, I want something that's fresh and good, and this has come to the rescue. Next, I wanted to add some dry foods into my 
long-term storage. You can have rice, quinoa, oatmeal, pasta, even popcorn can last a long, long time. These are foods that you can buy in a bag, one pound, two pounds, sometimes up to 25 pounds. And you can store these away in an airtight container and then you'll have them to last for the longest term. But you can also use them. You don't have to put them away forever. You can utilize these foods in your regular cooking. So that's one reason that I like to store them in clean canning jars. They're a nice size to have in the pantry. It's an easy size to rotate. I don't want everything in a five gallon bucket so that if I want some rice, beans, pasta, oatmeal, whatever, I don't want to have to open a gigantic packet because I don't have a large family anymore. So storing foods in sizes that you can rotate, use up in a reasonable amount of time makes sense. So I have rice, I have some oatmeal, I have popcorn. Don't put this in the freezer. You don't ever want to freeze the popcorn because it has a little moisture uh, droplet inside. And if you freeze it, then you know what happens when you freeze water, poof. And you can destroy the little pop secret that's inside, that that little bit of moisture is what pops when you heat it up. So don't put your popcorn in the freezer. I also picked up some yellow split peas for a little variety. Split pea soup is so easy to make. It doesn't always have to be green. You can use yellow split peas. I have a very simple recipe of how I make split pea soup in my crock pot, and I'll put a link to that video in case you're interested on how to make easy split pea soup. I also picked up a bag of pistachios because that's something that we like around here. But know that nuts contain a lot of oil. They're not going to last as long as dried grains and rice, beans, things like that. Nuts just have natural oils that are going to go rancid. And you can want them to last forever, but it isn't possible. You want to make sure that you're rotating your nuts sooner rather than later. They can last longer if you store them in the freezer, but nuts are still not going to last forever. Just be aware of that. So don't stockpile more than you can eat in a reasonable amount of time. Winter weather is here. Maybe you want to pick up some soup mixes. The Bear Creek soups are very delicious. They only cost a few dollars. They come in a variety of flavors. You add eight cups of water, simmer it for 20 minutes, and you have a nice big hearty meal. You can serve a big group or you have some leftovers for a while. I made a video before on some different stirrings that you can add to these to make them bigger, better, heartier meals. I'll put a link to that video in case you're interested in how to make a nice big meal out of the Bear Creek soup mixes. Next, think about your hot beverages that you enjoy on a cold winter's night. I buy extra tea bags and I seal them into a clean canning jar. Even if you can't vacuum seal your tea bags, getting a tight fitting lid and storing them away in a cool, dark, dry environment can help them last for quite a few number of years. Not a tea drinker, maybe you like coffee. You can find some vacuum packed coffee. The longest lasting coffee is the freeze dried. So I also have chosen some little of the single serve. You can buy instant coffee in a jar or you can buy the little single serves and you can pop them into your purse, into your gym bag, take them with you in your bug out bag, have a few in your car or even in your suitcase so that you can have the beverages that you want in a format that's easy to use and longer lasting. Then think about adding some variety into the basic meals that you already have. Maybe you want to get some pizza sauce or some Alfredo sauce. And some of the Alfredos come in different types of flavors for cheese, garlic. Try them out. See if you can find one that you enjoy. And then don't forget things like barbecue sauce, Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce. If you need any of those items, pick them up now and then you'll have extras put away. When you're building your stockpile, say you want to have a jar of pizza sauce for a recipe. Well, then what you do is you buy two of them. You have one to use and one from your stockpile. Then the next time you want to make some pizza or use pizza sauce, you can take the one out of your stockpile and then you can buy another one and replace it. Or you could replace it with two, depending on how often you would use that product. And that's how you have always a supply of things that you're rotating it, you're replenishing it, and as you buy a few extras, then you can grow that stockpile to last for a longer amount of time. 
Think about other condiments. I bought an extra ketchup and I bought a nice yellow mustard. I also like spicy mustard, so I picked one of those up as well. So that gives me a variety of longer lasting spices, condiments, flavorful things that I can use to make my recipes and my meals have more flavor, variety, and just help people have things that they enjoy. I know my ketchup has to be Heinz and I want to have enough of that. So that's something that I make a priority and I always keep several of them around. Leave it in the comments below. What are some foods that you're adding into your prepper pantry food storage stockpile this month? It may be cold where you live as well. So we want to have a nice way to make some soups and stews, casseroles, warm foods, hot drinks. Add variety so that you're able to have those hearty meals you need to keep you going during the darkest days of winter. The days are getting longer, so that's something to look forward to, but we still have some cold nights to get through. I hope if you enjoyed my video, you'll like it. You'll share it with someone else you think might enjoy it. And please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.